as a physician, when, when I see someone who's newly diagnosed, basically when we're thinking about helping them with their coordination and their slowing, we're actually pretty good at doing that right now in the early stages of Parkinson's. And it hinges on using medications to improve the dopaminergic tone in the brain. Um, so in effect, we're working on replacing dopamine that's been lost in Parkinson's. And then the problem is that as time goes on, um, there's more dopamine lost, people take the medicine, they start to develop a more complicated response for various reasons, but the medicines that we have simply are not capable of adequately controlling the symptoms all through all of the different stages of Parkinson's disease for many people. So it's clear that we need something better. Um, there's a lot of focus in the field now about how we could take that idea of dopamine replacement and change it, morph it, um, make it more efficient, make it better for the patients. And so we're looking at a lot of new delivery systems that are coming up. But I think from my point of view, one of the really fascinating ways to think about delivering dopamine is at a more in a more biological way. So by using cells that themselves produce dopamine that we could deliver um, eventually in a very individualized way to the site where the dopamine is needed, to the site where it's missing, to the site where it's going to help people with their motor symptoms smoothly through the day and um, trying to avoid a lot of the side effects that we get through medications that we have right now. So I think that cell-based therapies uh, has a lot of excitement for a number of reasons. One is that, as many know, we don't really know why people get Parkinson's disease. So unless, if you don't know the, the reason for this, it's hard to develop curative therapies or vaccinations. Cell-based therapy uh, doesn't rely on you knowing the mechanism of the disease, because what we do is we put in new healthy dopamine neurons uh, that take over the function of the ones that are lost to the disease. So in a way, it's a little bit easier that way because we can focus on replacing something uh, that is, that's gone missing in the disease. So it's actually not a, a cure, it's a treatment. Uh, and we think it's a better treatment than oral dopamine medication uh, because with the cells, we can deliver the, them exactly in the location where they're needed and also, the, after transplantation, they connect up with the neurons in the brain, so they release dopamine only when it's needed. So the, the dose and the level is physiological compared to when you take medication. You know, you have high doses, low doses, you know, it fluctuates a lot. And the longer you take your oral medication, the more problematic it gets, whereas the cells, uh, they're coached by, this, by the brain and what is needed. We have started clinical trial to replace dopaminergic neurons in the brain. And uh, so we will have the final outcome in 2022. And if it is very nice, the Japanese government will approve it as a standard treatment. I think cooperation between patients and researchers and doctors are very important to make a new treatment. And also, it is very important to believe the future. Cell-based therapies, especially dopamine cell replace therapies for Parkinson's, are a very exciting place at the moment. For many years, people have thought about this. Many people have done little trials with it. But we've now moved to a stage where the stem cell-derived dopamine cells uh, are now starting to arrive in the clinic. So whilst they've started last year in some countries, I think in Europe and in the, uh, America, they will be coming to first in human trials, first in Parkinson's trials in the next year or two. So some of the latest breakthroughs we've had in the sort of European area have been the capacity to take stem cells and make them into the proper dopamine cells you need for Parkinson's disease. We've now demonstrated they work as well as some of the cells we used in the past, the fetal cells, which we know can be transformative for some patients. And now we're gearing up to actually get to clinical trials and we're in the final stages of testing them uh, to the necessary level which the regulators need. So the time it will take from these sort of first trials, if you like, to become a more routine therapy is difficult to predict. What I can say is it will take a little time, but the investment which pharma has now put into this is huge. So in the last three years, as far as I know, over a billion dollars is now invested in this field. So there's a real sense that we can get this quickly to trial, through trials, and to everybody who would benefit from this type of treatment with Parkinson's. 
the role of charities and the, the role of different organisations in supporting this type of work varies, but the Cure Parkinson's Trust sit at the forefront of that capacity to take science to the clinic and clinic to the science. They involve the patients, they involve the public, they get out there and make people aware of what's happening and also some of the dangers which can arise with this type of therapy. So the Cure Parkinson's Trust are really one of those unique charities that is driven by huge motives to actually make a difference to patients here and now. And they've been very supportive of the cell therapy programs where other organisations and charities have perhaps seen it in not such a favourable way.